Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. We're right in the middle of uh, summer in the Northern Hemisphere, and uh, many, many different people are experiencing heat waves all over the place. In fact, I've got one here in Ottawa right at the moment. So I think it's very timely for me to talk about uh, air conditioners. You know, we if we had more efficient uh, air conditioning systems, we could use a lot less uh, electricity to operate them. You know, there's a very strong feedback going on here because as uh, climate warms up, more and more people will run air conditioners and uh, this increases electrical power consumption, but there's also waste heat from the air conditioners. So the air conditioner pulls the heat out of buildings and puts it on the streets outside. So in some cities, the actual air conditioning systems, the byproduct, the waste heat is causing the city to be like it's contributing a lot to the um, urban heat island effect. It means that the, you know, if you don't have air conditioning, conditioning, you suffer because of other people running air conditioners. So it's also a, um, you know, it, it, it's people that can afford air conditioners get the comfort of it and people that can't, you know, can have life threatening, um, uh, it can be life threatening because they don't have access to cool places. So, you know, what, so, so anyway, I'm going to talk about, you know, I've talked all about the climate in the environment outside. And, uh, you know, this video, maybe the next one, I'm going to talk about the indoor climate and, uh, you know, the other options as to how, how we keep ourselves cool. So just a key uh, statistic here. Roughly, you know, uh, late 2018, there were 1.6 billion air conditioners globally. That number is projected to rise to 5.6 billion air conditioners by 2050. And the power consumption to run these 5.6 billion air conditioners will exceed that power consumption of China today, all of China. Um, not for air conditioners, but their power consumption. So, so this is a huge issue. You know, as the climate is warming, more and more people need air conditioners, and then it causes increased warming. Okay, so let's get right into the into the uh, details here. So, this is um, this is a building in Fuzhou, China, um, and look at all these air conditioning units. I mean. Surely, if you had central air conditioning system, you could get much higher economies of scale and efficiencies. You know, obviously the building doesn't have that. Maybe it's an older building and everybody has to have their own individual units. And, you know, it looks like there's, there's multiple units on individual houses. And right here, it's talking about the number of air conditioning units worldwide will rise from 1.6 billion today to 5.6 billion by mid-century. Um, this is, uh, of course, my website. The latest post on July 20th was all about um, dynamic systems and tipping points. And uh, this is a great image here of uh, canoe tipping. So nonlinear tipping of the oceanic carbon cycle, the potential to drive mass extinctions. Okay, uh, if you go on to Twitter, um, you know, have a look on my Twitter feed. Uh, at Paul H. Beckwith to uh, see my tweets about this video and the next one and, and my previous ones, etc. Okay, so let's get back to, let's get to the main topic, uh, air conditioners here. So the world wants air conditioning that could warm the world. Okay, this was from a 2018 article, uh, New York Times. So more than crickets and fireflies, more than baseball and cookouts, nothing signals the arrival of summer in the U.S. like the soft, familiar whir of air conditioning. Okay, um, the number of air conditioners worldwide is projected to soar from 1.6 billion units today, so that was in May of 2018, to 5.6 billion units by 2050. This is according to the International Energy Agency, the IEEA, and if left unchecked, by 2050, air conditioners would use as much electricity as China does for all activities today. And of course, you know, if we're using coal and natural gas plants to generate electricity, then, um, then greenhouse gas emissions will, from these um, 
to run the air conditioner will increase from 1.25 billion tons in 2016 to 2.28 billion tons in 2050, further contributing to global warming. Now, air conditioning right now is concentrated in a handful of countries, mainly in the U.S. and Japan, and increasingly in China. 90% of American households have air conditioning. Okay, but when we look at Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East, where about 2.8 billion people live, only about 8% of the population owns an air conditioner. Okay, however, as incomes rising in these countries, more and more people are installing air conditioners in their homes, and as the temperature rises too. So the, much of the growth is projected to occur in India, China, and Indonesia. Um, but uh, so also there's other factors, because as household wealth increases, people have refrigerators and televisions, and these appliances generate heat, making homes warmer inside. Now, air conditioners work by venting hot air outside, so they make surrounding neighborhoods warmer. By some estimates, air conditioning can raise overnight temperatures by about 2 degrees Fahrenheit, about 1 degree Celsius in some cities. So that greatly contributes to the urban heat island effect. Of cities. So basically, if enough of your neighbors buy an air conditioner, it may increase the temperature in your home enough to drive you to do the same. Okay, so, uh, you know, and it talks about the heat in India and cooling degree days, the amount of air conditioning required in cities like Chennai and M Mumbai. These places have twice as many cooling degree days as the hottest cities in the U.S. So basically the cities are much, much hotter. It's unbelievably hot and there's more and more air conditioning required. Now the heat wave that plagued Chicago in 1975 killed more than 700 people. In the, the 2003 European heat wave and the 2010 Russian heat wave killed tens of thousands each, up to 70,000 in 2003. And the penetration of air conditioning, as I'll show, is much less in Europe even than in the U.S. So air conditioning introduction in the U.S. cut premature deaths on hot days by 75% since 1960. Okay, so it's a lifesaver. You know, as it gets hotter and hotter, it's actually, it's not a, it's not a um, want, it's a, it's a need to, for survival. Um, now, also the efficiency of air conditioners. Many air conditioners on sale in India use twice as much electricity um, to provide the same amount of cooling as more efficient units. So they're very, very inefficient. This is something that we can definitely address. Um, air conditioners in Japan and the European Union are 25% more efficient than units sold in the U.S. and China. So there needs to be efficiency standards for air conditioners, and these high-efficiency systems need to go to other countries. Okay, um, and also, you know, the idea, the refrigerants used, um, also, you know, you can't use uh, refrigerants that are potent greenhouse gases. And the cost of electricity is also important. This is a, and also, um, this is a huge a role for renewables to power uh, peak energy generation because it's, hot, it's hottest during the day and that's when there's uh, most uh, um, demand for cooling and that's when you can get most energy produced by solar power, for example. Um, air conditioning is, of course, a major um, issue in the fight against climate change. So let's have a look. Uh, if you just Google Google Images air, condition, air Conditioning System Diagram, you can see all of these images here and basically Inside the house, you have a system like this. You have fans blowing the hot air inside the house. It, uh, there's a refrigerant or a coolant f flowing through these pipes, and there's a radiator to have a very large surface area, and you basically, basically the heat inside the house vaporizes the refrigerant in these pipes. And when you turn a liquid to a vapor, it requires a huge amount of energy absorption. So that comes from the hot air in the room. And what comes out is the cold air, which conditions, um, which, which uh, you know, so you're converting the hot air inside the room to cold air. So this is a key component of um, the system. Um, this is another image here. Um, you know, again, air conditioning system diagram. I just went down a bit. So this is a basic system. I talked about the evaporator here. So you have the liquid coolant. You get the hot air from the room, vaporizing the coolant. The energy is taken out of the air in the room, and cold air comes into the, you know, cold air replaces it. 
Um, the, the, basically, the gas that then runs through, it's expanded, which cools it, and it's compressed, and then it's driven through. And this unit is, this is inside the room. This, the condenser is the opposite to the evaporator, and it's outside the house. So the, um, the hot air comes, the air comes in, and um, the um, basically the vapor is converted back into a liquid and the energy is released out into the environment okay so it heats ex so basically you're taking heat out of the house and putting it out into the environment and then uh, the system recycles and repeats so that's basically what's going on the ba you can you can google things like wiki how how to understand the basic operation of the home air conditioning system so you have a compressor, which um, is the heart of the unit. It pumps the vapor refrigerant through the system. Okay, you have the, uh, this is the um, part I showed you. This is the evaporator. So this is inside the room. So hot air is blown through. It, ev it evaporates the liquid and the refrigerant and that the liquid then um, becomes a gas and that gas carries away all of the heat energy and the cold, the, so the heat energy is removed from the air to cool the room. Okay, so that's the key component inside the house. This is the key component outside the house where you have the vapor um, and then it condenses to a liquid, releasing the energy which goes out into the environment. And then you have an expansion valve here. The fluid comes through and when it expands, um, it cools, so you get the gas coming through, it expands because the volume, the area greatly increases. You know, this diameter of pipe is much smaller than this one, so that you get an expansion. When you expand the gas, you get cooling, and you get it back to a liquid, so you get a loop to um, go through the cycle. So that's basically the gist of how the air conditioner works. Now, do Americans need air conditioning? This is a recent article, July 3rd, 2019. And it's a very interesting article because many people in America, they freeze because the air conditioning systems are much too cold. So in some offices, it's, actually, it's absurd because you have central air conditioning, temperatures are too cold. So individuals in their cubicles might have a heater or something in the summer and they're wearing sweaters and, you know, they're, they're, they're chilly. And of course, it depends on the age of the person, the gender of the person and all these different factors. So I'm going to talk about some of these. So when did the air conditioner come about? About 116, 117 years ago. Okay, a junior engineer in a printing plant, he devised a contraption to blew air over water-filled pipes that dried out. Okay, so that air was cooled down, the water from the air condensed, so it re re reduced the humidity in the building that was gumming up the pages of a humor magazine called Judge in this building. Okay, so then it took off from there. Without cooling, of course, there would be no server fan, uh, farms to run the internet. In fact, we're building some of these server farms up in the high Arctic because you, the cooling uh, expenses to cool these things is enormous. If you build them in a cold place, you can use the, the coldness of the Arctic, but that's only going to work for so much longer because the Arctic is warming like crazy. Nearly 90% of American households have some form of air conditioning, more than any country in the world except Japan. Okay, um, on an overheated planet, AC becomes more and more desirable. But it's a paradox because um, even as architects and engineers are making ever more efficient buildings to meet energy standards set by cities like New York, um, we're still freezing in our offices and fighting with our partners over whether to turn on the air conditioning. Parts of Germany and France, the European heat wave was uh, crazy a few weeks ago, and uh, there's just a very low amount of air conditioning. I think, uh, you know, 5% in, in France, and, uh, you know, th th even smaller in Germany. Okay, people are not used to, the, because of the, you know, the huge heat waves there are only becoming a very recent thing. A lot of people, there's not much penetration of air conditioning units into these systems. Okay, um, now one of the questions, you know, think about the term air conditioning. Do we need to cool the entire room or could we just cool our bodies, for example? Okay, that's one of the things that's important. And here's a famous quote in, by um, the air conditioning averse title character in Lancelot by Walter Perry, Percy. I'd rather sweat and stink 
than um, and drink ice water. Well, there you go. Okay, and here's something. Okay, I'll continue in another video. Okay, thanks for listening.